Good morning. Good to see all those who came out this morning to worship. Let's be standing and singing. There is a name I love to hear. confession uh, to make. Uh, this morning I, I got up and I opened the door. I was looking outside, look, looking at the rain, just observing God's creation, the beauty of it. And I realized just how selfish I've been lately. Um, how it has become, again, uh, and I go through this periodically, you know, life is like this, and uh, to where it's about me. You know, I just felt selfish. <clears throat> and I realized that, uh, and it, it hurt me. Uh, it it brought me to tears. The Holy Spirit was convicting me that uh, it's, you know, that it's uh, becoming about work, the dollar, okay, possessions, uh, just things, okay, and that's not what it's supposed to be about. So every once in a while I have to get that slap upside the head to, to get me my priorities right again. And, and this morning uh, I was definitely convicted of that. And, uh, and at first it hurt, and then it, I had tears of joy, okay, because immediately I felt the comfort of the Lord, okay, when I said, forgive me, Lord. You know, I felt his, that comfort immediately, and I had that peace. That surpasses understanding, okay, and um, uh, that, that's just something that we have to stay on top of. I believe every man has to stay on top, top of these things because life, life gets busy, okay. I was talking to another friend in the lobby a few minutes ago that was talking about being stressed out. You know, it's, you know, we can get caught up in that very easily, you know. We can get caught up in worldly things, and it's, it's not supposed to be about that. I mean, he's enough. He's got us, you know. We just need to realize that, and Give credit where credit is due. Without him, we can do nothing, right? We can do nothing, okay? We're blessed, and we need to realize that how blessed we really are. No matter what's going on in our lives, no matter what circumstances tell us, we are blessed. This is a letter from our Father I want to read. And it's um, an, an intimate message from God to you, okay? And it starts out, my child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise. I'm familiar with all your ways. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered, for you were made in my image. In me you live and move and have your being, for you are my offspring. I knew you even before you were conceived. I chose you when I planned creation. You were not a mistake, for all your days are written in my book. 
I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together in your mother's womb and brought you forth on the day you were born. I have been mis misrepresented by those who don't know me. I am not distant and angry, but I am the complete expression of love. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you, simply because you are my child and I am your father. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could, for I am the perfect father. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand, for I am your provider and I meet all your needs. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope because I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts towards you are countless as the sand on the seashore, and I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good for you, for you are my treasured possession. I desire to establish you with all my heart and all my soul. I want to show you great and marvelous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me, and I will give you the desires of your heart, for it is I who gave you those desires. I am able to do more than you could ever possibly imagine. For I, I, for I am your greatest encourager. I am also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. When you are brokenhearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. One day I will wipe away every tear from your eyes. I'll take away all the pain you have suffered on this earth. I am your Father, and I love you even as I have loved my son, Jesus. For in Jesus, my love for you is revealed. He is the exact representation of my being. He came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you, and to tell you that I am not counting your sins. Jesus died so that you and I could be reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I gave up everything I love that I might gain your love. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you receive me, and nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home, and I will throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. My question is, will you be my child? I am waiting for you. Love, your dad, almighty God. Joan put uh, a lot of copies of this in the foyer where the prayer box is. Yeah, anyone's and everyone's welcome to a copy of that. Um, I'm gonna post this up where I need to look at it regularly myself. Uh, I read this, I can't tell you how many times, the, where it was words, and then finally, when I read it this morning, it spoke to me, okay? So read it until it speaks to you, okay? I mean, th these words, it tells you each scripture, everything I read, there's a scripture beside it where this comes from, where our Heavenly Father is speaking to you. So let's go to the Lord now. First of all, um, I'm sorry, you can be seated now. <laughs> um, so is there any unspoken prayers? Definitely. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father God, we thank you, Father. We thank you for your words, your kind words to us, Father, your loving words, Father. Without you, we can do nothing, Father. Father, help us to realize these, these things, God, that... Father, that you, you've given us the gift of the Holy Spirit to guide our every step. Father, slow us down, Father. Help us to, Father, realize the, the important things of life, the treasures in heaven and not the treasures on this earth, God, to seek your face, seek you in first in everything that we do. Father, everything we think, say, and do this day, let it be to your glory, God, and we praise you for these things. Father, we thank you for anyone in the congregation for their, for them, for their families, God, for, for sick ones, Father, for anyone suffering from COVID, 
cats their father any types of illnesses and pains and losses, uh, just suffering of, of any type, Father. We just put everything in your hands, God. Father, help us to deny self, pick up your cross, and follow you. And Father, most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and all that was wrought on that cross. And in his precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Victor Baptist Church. Give the Lord Jesus some glory. Amen. Uh, amen. It is good to be in God's house. And uh, Brother Rick, thank you so much, man. That was God's word. Everything that he was saying you can find in Scripture. And it is my prayer that everyone here understands that you have a Heavenly Father and a Savior who loves you. And uh, we, we want to welcome you this morning. I do have a few announcements, and we also have a very exciting special guest. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Gideons. How many of you have ever heard of the Gideons? Amen. How many of you, when I said that, you're like, I do not know what you were talking about, Pastor Chris. Amen. Very good. Some of y'all already lived. But uh, this morning, you're going to find that out, and I'm going to introduce him in a second. But I did want to just remind everybody, one, we will not be having service tonight. We have a really big week that's happening, and we also, um, we had a young lady who was a part of our church who uh, passed away last week, and her name is Ray Price, and we're going to be ministering to her family this week, and if you're interested in, in just uh, loving that family, uh, her service is going to be at uh, the um, uh, um, Carolina Memorial uh, tomorrow and Tuesday. Her setting up is Monday from 6 to 8, and then her service is Tuesday at 1 p.m. If you'd like to uh, come and support that family, if not, just be in prayer for them. Is, um, uh, of course, they're grieving her, her loss, uh, but I do have this great hope in Christ Jesus. Um, she was a graduate of the Hannah House. She was exposed to Jesus and his Holy Spirit, and we gave her a Bible here, and she got baptized here back in October. Amen. Um, so um, just keep that family in your prayers. Uh, also, next Sunday is uh, Mission Sunday and, and Baptism Sunday, and so just be in prayer as we celebrate the Lord in that way. And uh, it's Mission Sunday. We, we're going to give our, our tithe that Sunday to our missions team that will be going to Honduras uh, June 3rd to the 10th. And they're going to be ministering to the school that um, our, our dear uh, brother and sister help uh, get started. Um, how, how long has it been uh, uh, now that, that school's been running? 20 years. And, and, you, and you guys kind of took it over during COVID. Wasn't that wonderful? <laughs> um, and... Udo, he does multimedia and internet, and so it was as if God put y'all right there at the perfect moment to minister to uh, those children right there, And uh, but uh, very, very excited that um, we can do that next Sunday. Uh, also, we have an, a family revival this week, uh, Wednesday through uh, Friday, and if you're not sure what that is, just come. It's going to be amazing. Um, every night at 7 p.m., uh, it, it's a return to just worship and, and invite your family. Uh, if you're driving through the neighborhood and you see some kids, just put them in the... No, don't, don't do that. Don't. <laughs> uh, ask first. Amen. But uh, we're going to have a wonderful time of worship uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, uh, 7 o'clock each night. Um, and we're going to end it with a fish fry Friday evening. And uh, up until from 6 o'clock till the service, our prayer team and our deacons are going to be available right here. And uh, if you'd like to just bring your family for prayer or to be prayed over, or if you just have, if you're just by yourself and you want to be prayed over, just, just come on out from 6 o'clock up until the time of the service. We will pray over you and, and minister to you, uh, whatever you need. And um, we're also, as we enter into February, what is February most known for? Oh, stop that. Amen. Yeah, but you're right. President's Day. What about President's Day? Amen. But we're, all, we're always about uh, Valentine's Day. Our, our youth is doing a uh, Valentine's uh, a date night fundraiser for their youth group. If you're interested in that, that's February 18th from 6 to 8. Um, and it is a gift offering of $50 per couple. And there's a sign-up sign sheet as well in the back hallway. And uh, I, I believe that you will have a great time uh, if you go to that. And it's going to a good cause for them. And uh, also... We are having a, um, an opportunity for all you married couples. Um, it's 
a um, there's a uh, advertisement for it in our bulletin. But it's uh, if you're looking to uh, have a deeper connection in your marriage, it's an eight week course to transform your marriage. And it's, it's completely free. It's um, being ran by a, a professional Christian counselor. And, uh, and so if you might be interested in that, uh, the contact information is there or come and see me and we'll get you hooked up. And, and also, you know, we kind of ignore the single people. Is there any single people out there? Are you proud? Amen. Amen. We got some single people. Uh, we're looking at starting a, a singles ministry uh, in February. And it's going to be called In Christ Alone. <laughs> so, no, uh, serious, but um, we, we, because <laughs> that's all you need is Jesus, amen. Uh, but we, we want to minister to those who are, are going through life alone, and I'm very excited about that. But um, with all that said, I wanted to read a card, and then we're going to play a video about the Gideons, and I'm going to invite uh, Brother Mackie Driggers up. But this card says, Dear church family, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for your prayers, phone calls, and cards during my sorrow. Your kindness will never be forgotten. You will always be in my heart and prayers. Love you all, Miss Octavia. And uh, we love you, Miss Octavia, very much. And uh, continue to pray for you and your family as um, her, her brother is went to be with Jesus. Amen. Um, but if I could, can we get that video to go ahead and uh, play? My name is Ryan Reese, and I grew up in Los Angeles, California. And when I was growing up, I was a son of a pastor. But there was always still something inside me that wanted to see what was on the other side of the ministry. Like the music, the art, the rock and roll. So I'm working in the music industry. I'm working in the skateboard industry for about 18 years. What did I find there? I found money. I, you know, I was traveling the world nine months out of the year, working with some of the biggest rock and hip hop bands, the cocaine like crazy, tons of Xanax, alcohol like crazy, drinking every single day. And I just, all my habits increased because I had more opportunity, more parties, more opportunity, traveling the world, living this dream and nothing can satisfy my soul. And it all boils down to where I'm in Costa Rica and I OD for the third time. And I just remember being in my hotel room and I'm like, Jesus, I'm like, if you exist, Reveal yourself to me. Prove that you're real to me. I need you to show up in my life, and I need you to heal me, and I need you to radical change me. And I remember going, man, I'm going, go, is there a Bible in here? And I'm like, I know there's these Bibles in these hotel rooms. I would see them all over the place. I'd be high on cocaine and open the door or the drawer and see a Gideon Bible. I steal it. I put it in my backpack because I'm going to find God. So I throw the Bible in there. I get on the plane. I start reading the Bible, the Gideon Bible, for six hours straight from Panama City all the way to LAX. And as I'm reading, the whole skateboard team, the photographers, the filmers, everyone's looking over at me, reading the Bible, the cocaine pirate. And I remember when I landed in LAX after reading the living word of God, which is the DNA of Jesus Christ. Landing in LAX. And just feeling that peace that I've never felt. And I remember just going, God, I don't know what you want to do in my life. Here I am. Do whatever you want to do in my life. And I said, God, thy will be done. So good. Y'all give Brother Mackie Driggers a hand as he comes up. Right now. morning. God is real, isn't he? Amen. That God is living testimony. That's why I wanted to show that. That's, that is his personal testimony of how not necessarily growing up as a preacher's kid makes a difference, but I mean, he knew the word, but he ran away from God, and thankfully there was one of these Gideon Bibles in that room when he needed it. So that's what this ministry is all about, always has been, and always will be. And if it fails to be that, we need to quit. This ministry, God breathed life into this ministry and back in 1899 to three Christian men 
in a hotel room up in Wisconsin. And they were sharing, two of them were sharing a room together. And they were trying to pray and decide of some way that they could reach uh, Christian men that were traveling at that time with the Word of God. Because times there was a lot of other things that they could get into even back then. So uh, six months later they got together and they prayed and they had been praying the whole time. And God revealed that he wanted them to start a ministry for men. And that's what it was. They, they were studying the Word and they were studying Judges chapter 6. And that's where the name Gideons came from. So they started this ministry with three men, and today we have 250,000 missionaries on your behalf around the world. Us and our wives that are part of the auxiliary, they do their part, we do our part. But we have Gideons in 200 countries, territories, and possessions. They live there. That's their, where they live, and they distribute God's word in those areas. 186 of those countries, or roughly 186 of them, these Gideons cannot afford to purchase these Bibles and Testaments that we give out. So they depend on us here in America to send Bibles to them. So we depend on churches just like this that support us. And we're very thankful that we have a lot of churches just like this church that y'all support us. And we thank you for that. There was a young lady that received one of these little testaments when she was about 13 years old in school. She took it home that afternoon, was excited and read it, studied it. That evening she wanted to show it to her father and tell him what she'd gotten at school. So she took it in there at dinner time and told her father what she had and he got furious. He took this little testament and he threw it out in the woods. And he told her, don't ever bring that back in this house again. <coughs> so she goes to bed crying that night, not knowing how to fix this dilemma. Because she'd already accepted Christ that day. So she went out that night and she, with her flashlight, and she found that little testament. She snuck it back into her bedroom under the covers with a flashlight, and she read it. She found in there, too, where it said to honor your father and mother. She didn't really didn't know what to do then. She knew what her dad had just told her hours before. But she prayed about it, and the next morning she felt compelled to, to confess what she had done. So she took it in there at breakfast, and she told her father what she had done. And that time he took it and put it in his coat pocket. He went on to work. She went on to school. Well, that day he worked in a coal mine, and there was an explosion in that coal mine. And he, along with 29 other men, were trapped below the surface of the earth with no way out. It was about four days before they found them. Of course, they had all perished. <coughs> but when they found her dad, his body, he had this little testament clutched in his hand. And he had written her, written her a note asking her to forgive him. And he, he had also signed the back of this book where believers, when you accept Christ, you can sign your name in the back. Well, when he got looking a little further, all 29 of those men had signed this little book, accepting Christ as their Lord and Savior. I mean, that's, that's a miracle. That's, I call that God's multiplication factor, you know. This one little testament that cost about a dollar and a half, it saved 30 men that were heading for hell because of somebody like myself that was standing at a school one day and handing out these testaments and gave one to that little girl, little young lady. And God did the rest. And it tells us, I plant us, Apollos watered, but God gives the increase, 1 Corinthians 3, 6. So... That's why we do what we do. Like I said, we, are, we have a lot of other ministries. We do most, most popular is the Gideon Bible in a hotel room. But we do go into schools um, when we're allowed. Unfortunately, for about the last 15 years, we have not been allowed in the Berkey County School District. So pray for that for us. But since that's happening, not only in America but worldwide, uh, last year the Gideons, 
decided we need to reach those children a different way, so they opened up the avenue of Vacation Bible School, and we were allowed to come here in June, I think it was, or July, and distribute about 70-some testaments to your community children here. So we have different ways to get those testaments to the to those students. We also have like Coastal Carolina Fair in Charleston. We do the same thing for a week or so there. State Fair in Columbia and all over the world we do things like that. But we distribute testaments also to our police and fire and EMS personnel, rescue personnel. We take these used Bibles when they come out of a hotel room after about six years. Uh, we replace them and we cut this hard cover off, put a soft cover on it and we turn around and put them back into prison ministry in the jails and prisons all across America and other places. And I was privileged just uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, we were going to Kirkland Correctional in Columbia f for a long time until COVID. And of course, that you know closed up. But 10, 12 days ago, we were allowed to come back after three years of not being there. So we had 122 of these used Bibles that we planted seeds with those young men in those cells. And it was, it was a different experience than what I experienced four years earlier um, because they were all locked up. There was nobody outside. They used to have a basketball court out there. Wasn't any of that happening. Everybody was confined. Um, so the prisons are really a lot different than they were even in that environment. But we had the opportunity to pray with several of those young men. And, and hopefully God, you know, we, not hopefully, we know Isaiah 55, 11, that God tells us in his word that my word will not return void. So we know that will happen when it's his time. But we also go to hospitals. Our wives do doctor's offices and nurses uh, giving out medical testaments. They use little white ones just like this for different color, but it's used for nurses and, and people in the doctor's offices and such. We also go to colleges. We go to University of South Carolina twice a year go to Clemson and a lot of other areas. But we're also, like I said, we're worldwide. We have Gideons in all these other countries that are doing the same things that we do. So I just thank you for that. <coughs> we did, um, we have also they opened last June along with Vacation Bible School. They're now allowing us to do food distributions where you have food pantries. Uh, and we joined up with the one that's being done in Mont Scorna. Uh, a lot of churches participating in it. It's been being done at Point North, and um, it's changing now. Next month, it'll be done at Monk's Corner Pentecostal starting there on Saturday mornings. But since we went there and starting in August, we have given out over 1,500 of these testaments to people in need. And I've seen a lot of need in that food line, people driving in there with their cars and waiting and, and, and had the opportunity many times to pray with them and share the gospel with them and even give them some extra ones to give to their children and so forth. So God is really uh, opening up a lot of different areas for us to be able to do the things that we want to do, and that's get his word out into the world. Our sole purpose, the only purpose we exist, is to win men, women, boys, and girls to saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It's plain and simple. Everything we do, as much as we do, meetings and so forth, it all points to somebody getting one of these testaments. Because in those countries where I was just talking about, those people are poor, I mean really poor, and unless somebody gives them a copy of God's word, they'll probably never have it. So we're blessed to be able to do that. Honduras is one of the areas we're at, one of the many countries. Um, I mean, it's, it's just all over. But we also, back in just a little bit of history, the first Bibles were placed in a hotel room in 1908. And actually the church came to those Gideons back then and said, we want to help you all. So that's how the church involvement started. They paid for the first Bibles that those men placed 25 Bibles in that hotel room up there in 1908. So that's been going on for um, almost 100, what, 112, 13, 14 years. So we're very thankful for that. Um, also in 1941, in August, uh, the President Roosevelt, I think it was at that time, he allowed us to start giving testaments to the military. I wasn't alive back then. Most of us weren't. But, they, but all those soldiers, all those men that, in the military that were at Pearl Harbor that summer, they got a testament before December the 7th. So we can thank the Lord for that. We're still doing that. Uh, we, go, we were going to Fort Jackson in Columbia, uh, but that stopped also three years ago. Um, 
but the chaplains up there are very good at helping us. And they're actually, the chaplains themselves are giving out about 3,000 of these a month for us. Um, but we would love to be back in person doing that and hopefully pray for that as well. Um, like I said, there's, there's some other ways you can help us. And number one is prayer. Number two is financially. I did bring a new rack. It's in the back back here by that big coffee pot. We have cards in there, Gideon cards. This is an in-memory card. Someone just deceased has got a funeral. It's a wonderful time to donate Bibles in memory of that person. So think about that. The cards, you send the card to them. There's an envelope in there that you fill out and you send, put a check in it and you send it to us and we'll process it. Also, we need more men. We need more ladies to join this ministry. Uh, the devil is fighting us every step of the way and we need more men. We need more feet on the ground, more boots on the ground. So if you're a business, Christian business or professional man, uh, I would love to talk to you after the service and give you some more information and see if God might be leading you to something like this. Uh, it's just, and again, it's a privilege to be here. I won't take any more time, but I want to thank Pastor Chris and, and everybody here for allowing me to be here this morning. I know some of you, I know, know a good many of you, and I love this man and his wife right here, and I know you all do too. And just thank you all so much for allowing me to be here. Amen. And uh, Brother Mackey, he's going to be around after service. And if you feel a tug on your heart in any way, go, go and talk to that man. Amen. Uh, we're going to go into our time of, of tithe and offerings. Uh, would you all stand? When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on. Let us do his good will. He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a bird. Uh, Brother Craig, would you please uh, pray as we go into this time of prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you've given us. All that we have, Lord, comes from you. We come to this time of the service where we give back just a portion. A portion of what you've blessed us with, Father. We make it multiply many, many times over. So that we'll serve your kingdom here on earth as it was in heaven. So in your sweet son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. If you would, please take your Bibles and turn to Genesis chapter 25. Genesis chapter 25. Genesis chapter 25. And we're going to start reading at verse 19. Genesis chapter 25. Starting at verse 19. And when you get there, say, Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Oh, amen. Uh, Genesis 25, verse 19, and we're going to read to verse 34. Uh, and this is a story of brothers. Genesis chapter 25, 19 through 34. And this is what took place. This is the genealogy of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah as wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was what? Barren. And the Lord granted his plea, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. But the, ch but the children struggled within her, and she said, If all is well, why am I like this? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two peoples shall be separated from your body. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. So when her days were fulfilled to give birth, indeed, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out, what? All red. He was like a hairy garment all over, and so they called him Esau. Afterward, his brother came out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. So the boys grew, and Esau was a skilled hunter, a man of the field, but Jacob was a mild man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game, and Rebekah loved Jacob. Now Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in from the field, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me with that same red stew, for I am weary. Therefore his name was also called Edom. But Jacob said, Sell me your birthright as of this day. And Esau said, Look, I am about to die. What is a birthright to me? Then Jacob said, Swear to me this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. Then he ate and drank, arose, and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Amen. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, as we just look at your word, Father, reveal in us any place of hurt or contention. Uh, God, as you wish and desire us to love one another as you've loved us. And Lord, if your word says that we are to love our enemies, how much more should we love our brothers and sisters and those who are so deeply connected to us? God, that in this brief moment, Lord, that you would just reveal to us your spoken word. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll tell you what, this is a fascinating story that uh, this lady named Rebecca, she was barren and her husband Isaac prayed and, and God answered the prayer and she became a child and she knew something wasn't right going on inside. And she was like, what's going on? And so she asked God, because they didn't have ultrasounds and doctors back then, all right? This was going to be a surprise every time. And so when God told her that, oh, the, what is inside of you is not one, but two. And also, they are going to strive against one another, and the younger will rule over the older. Rebecca went to God, and God gave her a word. Now, the word, before it was ever written, it was spoken. God spoke, and we heard, and then we retold what he spoke to us. It says in Romans that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And right before that, it said, blessed is the feet 
of those who bring the gospel of peace. I wish to ask you, what message has your feet been bringing? Has it been the gospel of peace? Because right before they're even out of the womb, there's already been a word and a prophecy spoken over them that they're not going to get along. I mean, any of y'all siblings out there? Wouldn't it be crazy if your mom told you this story and you're like, well, see, mom, we can never get along. God's word says so. But this is the prophecy that, that she was given to explain the war within her. And twins, that's a whole other matter. Is there some twins here this morning? Or were you, are you a twin? Uh, like, amen. We, got, we do have some twins here. I, I have a special place in my heart for you because right from the start, at least like in the womb, you kind of have your own space, like kind of. Even though you're never alone, your mom's always with you. But if you're a twin, you absolutely have no space. I mean, right from the start, you're catching hands and elbows and knees, and it's really a truly a struggle within, much like Esau and Jacob. That is how their relationship began. It was in struggle. Rebecca had a war inside of her, and most of our problems in life is because of the war inside of us. And that war always makes itself on the outside. As we look at relationships, and we have been, we looked at Adam and Eve, we looked at Abraham and Sarah, and we briefly touched on Isaac and Rebecca, their, their, their union, and now we're looking at how patterns happen in families. They're going to have two sons, and these sons are going to be so different, even though they came out at the same time. I mean, one of them just wasn't even going to let it go. He, he had the ankle, right? I don't know if you have somebody in your life who's always grabbing your ankle. I don't know if you do or not. Maybe you're the one who's grabbing people's ankle. Amen? But there are seasons and times in which we will have war and struggle. But Paul wrote in Romans 12, Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, as far as it depends upon you, pursue peace with everyone around you. These are the words of the Apostle Paul. And when we are ever hurt or wronged or we are at struggle with somebody, we will have this creeping thing over us that we must be justified or we have to get them back. I don't know how many of you have ever heard these statements. I'm going to get you back. I'm going to make you pay. I hope you get what you deserve. Ooh, my goodness. Right? And as I think about those sentences, I pray that I do not get what I deserve. Amen? I pray that you do not get what you deserve because Jesus came and he took on himself what we all so deserve. I think that's very interesting that in the Bible, if you look back at verse 22, it says, but the children, what does it say? Struggled together within her that word struggle actually means to crush. In the Hebrew, it's to crush. They were crushing one another inside. They were bumping into one another. You are going to bump into people in life. And sometimes you're going to bump into somebody in your car. And they're going to be in your car. Have you ever had that a wonderful, what do we call that? An accident. Amen. Uh, we will have accidents in life. I had a buddy and his kids, they were close in age, and whenever they were being mean to one another, they had a t-shirt. It was like an extra, extra large size, and he would put his kids in that t-shirt. And they would have to stay in that t-shirt for an hour. That means that they had to pretty much do what? Everything together for about an hour. And if they fought again, it added time to the time in the t-shirt. My absolute favorite thing about that t-shirt is it said on big, bold letters, we are happy. <laughs> uh, I, I want to do that with adults sometime. <laughs> Wouldn't it be wild? You know, we are happy. And I, I really think that if we go beyond that word happy, God wants you to be at peace. Amen. And he desires us to be. And I want to just give you 
a few principles regarding just this story with Jacob and Esau. Because there's a few principles here and a few words that pop up. One is struggle. Uh, another is they were separated. Struggle can lead to separation or it could lead to new understanding. And then the last two words we see in this story is that Esau was weary, he was tired, he was empty, and it led him to despise the gift. Listen, if you're tired and weary and you don't draw in strength, it will lead to more animosity. But one, you have to understand that you will face struggle. And it's not about the struggle, it's our ability to choose humility over hurt. Every one of us, you're going to be hurt by another human individual in relationship, and you can either choose, and listen, I'm not saying to ignore the hurt. I'm just telling you, do not make your life about the hurt. Whenever someone sins against you or hurts you, you first have to understand, before they ever did it to you, they sinned against God. Amen? And I know that before I ever hurt another person or sinned against them, that first I sinned against God. And so whenever you face the hurt, you have to choose humility. Look to Jesus. Look to the cross. Look at what he endured for us. Because we have to understand if we're led by hurt, we're actually just going to hurt more other, other people. It's going to lead to more hurt. But we have to choose humility. And, and when we do that, forgiveness can come. Now, I have to tell you that forgiveness does not mean that you're in agreement with what happened to you. Okay? If you're struggling with forgiveness or unforgiveness, you have to, you're not in agreement with what happened to you. Forgiveness does not mean that you're supporting the one who hurt you. Forgiveness does not mean that you are going to give trust back to the person. Because listen, forgiveness does not mean access. And if you've ever been mad that someone has cut you off or, or, or took your position in their life and made it less, you can't get mad about that. You might not understand how you hurt them if they've done that especially if they have forgiven you. Because forgiveness doesn't mean that your position is restored. It, forgiveness is all about relieving yourself and the other person of the burden of the hurt and you actually walking in freedom from it. I think some of us, we carry a lot, but we don't even realize we're carrying it because just because you hurt doesn't mean you haven't forgiven. Did you hear me? You can forgive and still hurt. Healing takes time. But if you don't forgive, separation can occur. And separation, when approaching the argument, you must choose understanding and not your perception. Our perception about a conflict might be rooted in miscommunication, misunderstanding, or how many of you have ever done something and it just blew up in your face because it was all for good intentions? Amen. I mean, haven't you ever done anything? Just, be, oh, this will be nice, but it was not nice. Or maybe someone tried to do something for you, it was not, but it was not nice. Because if we're led around our perceptions, it's just a possibility. There are times in which we're wrong. I know, don't get mad with me, all right? But there are actually times in your life that you were wrong. And if you don't approach it with humility and approach it and look at it from a different perspective. And so here's my advice before you ever handle conflict in a relationship. There's four things, and then we're going to open up for invitation, and then we're going to pray, and then some of y'all are going to go and eat chicken. Amen? Some of y'all are. I myself, I'm not. I'm going to break against the Baptist mold, and I'm going to eat something different. Amen? But every one of us, we're going to either step from this moment into a new pattern of thinking, or we're going to continue on in the same patterns that continually lead to hurt. Here's four things you must do when you're approaching conflict. And the first thing is, and some of y'all know what it is, you need to ask yourself, have I prayed? Can you say pray? pray? Have you prayed for the person? Have you prayed for the conflict? Have you prayed for you? Have you prayed 
The second thing is this. Have you looked at the word? Can you say the word? Have you prayed? Have you looked at the word? The third thing. Have you sought wise counsel? Say wise counsel. Wise counsel. Now that would be like someone, well, hopefully like me, amen, I, I would hope to be wise counsel, but someone who you look at as someone having biblical knowledge and life experience. But here's the fourth thing, and you might not even think about it. Have I had a snack? <laughs> Say snack. snack. Amen. Because listen, some of y'all, y'all making some bad decisions just because you're hungry. I mean, uh, let's be honest, some of y'all get quite cranky. You know, have you ever seen like a child and they're just having a thing and then you give them something and they're like, I'm just having the best day ever. <laughs> so, sometimes we need to understand that we're approaching a situation and we're like Esau. We're weary. We're empty. We haven't taken care of ourselves. And Esau... He had the personality of, I need to feel better now. And so what Esau did was he despised his own birthright, the, the gift that he was promised upon his birth. He was promised, it says he despised, but what that means, it, it doesn't mean he hated it. It means that he did not see the value in it. And there are some of us, we don't understand the value of what God has already given us and promised us. There are people in your life that God values. I think about two moments that Jesus was crushed in the Gospels. Once was, of course, in the Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane actually means place of crushing. And then the second place is as he's walking through the crowd and people are crushing in on him, there's this woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years and she pushed herself past all those people just not to get his attention, not to even touch him, but if I could just touch what? The fringe, just whatever's hanging off of him. I just know that if I touch that, he will heal me. And power went out. Because there are some things you have not and you do not want to approach God with this because one, he might actually do something with it. And two, we might have to actually acknowledge what God needs cor to correct. But I, I tell you this, just reach out with a little bit of faith. Try to touch the fringe of his garments so that he can heal your heart because he wants you to have feet that bring the peace of the gospel. Just like my brother Mackey and many other Gideons, their feet are bringing the, the gospel to peace. What message has your feet been bringing to others? Amen. Would you please stand as we go to the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, as we enter into this time of invitation, God, it is our prayer that if there's some of us who are struggling with a relationship with healing, God, that we would first understand that we have been forgiven. When we ask you forgiveness, when we, re we repent of our sins, Lord, you don't hold forgiveness in front of us like a carrot. Lord, we are forgiven. All who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. God, I, I pray that everyone here understands how free your gift is. It costs much, but it is free. God, I thank you that you paid for it. And Lord, that we would have the heart and mind of you, that we would truly understand what it means to extend grace and mercy and forgiveness. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Praise the Lord. And hey, thank y'all for coming out in the rain. Praise God. Amen. Thank y'all so much. Um, I'm, you know, every time it rains like this, me, that pastor, I'm saying, Lord, please help all of us get up and come out. Amen. But, um, but thank y'all so much. Uh, please remember, no service this evening. Uh, next Sunday, man, it's going to be a worshipful, wonderful Sunday. And our, our brother, uh, Mackie, he's going to be around up at the front foyer. And uh, we're going to have some fellas, if, if y'all wouldn't mind, I'm going to get some guys with some of our offering bags. If you would like to give towards the Gideons before you leave, they're going to be up in the, the foyer right there uh, just to help this ministry out. Um, but thank y'all again so much. Um, praise Jesus. Amen. Uh, brother Earl Morris, would you please dismiss us as we pray?